This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famers, Mike Van Deese joining us here, Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. <laughs> they don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course and at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker, deal or no deal? The Jason Walker Show. Broadcasting from the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Here's Jason Walker. Hey, happy uh, Thursday. It is the Jason Walker Show. Presented by Capital Collision Center. Montana Law says it's your vehicle. It's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center. Here inside the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Got a busy Thursday set up. We're going to talk some volleyball with Audrey Hofer from the Capital Bruins as they look for a 71st consecutive win on Saturday in the state championship of the AA Volleyball tournament, they will host unbeaten CMR. And uh, we'll talk to Audrey coming up uh, here in about uh, 15 minutes or so. And at 40 past, Bud Force and John Langmore will join us. They are the co-directors of the movie Cowboys, a documentary portrait. And it is a fantastic movie. Uh, had a chance to watch it yesterday. And uh, you're going to want to see it. It comes out next week on Amazon, Google, and a few others, but uh, we'll talk to the co-directors about it. It was filmed in a lot of different states in the West, including Montana. So uh, we'll talk to those guys all in this day in history coming up and a uh, bunch more too. Don't forget tomorrow, uh, Coach John Thatcher, the longtime Butte High coach, will join us and uh, color analyst for Montana Tech Athletics. He's a, he's a great dude, and we'll, uh, just, we're just going to talk basketball with Coach tomorrow. Uh, here on the show. And Greg John Forte will join us. Yes, John Forte. According to his Facebook, that is how you pronounce it. It is not Gian Forte. It is John Forte. So we'll talk to uh, the governor-elect coming up uh, tomorrow uh, here on the Jason Walker Show. All right, Montana COVID updates. Here we go. 962 new cases. 43,031 confirmed. 472 deaths, 499 in the hospital. There are 17,755 active cases in the state of Montana. 24,804 recovered since March. About half of the population of the state of Montana has been tested to this date. 4,146 cases in Yellowstone County. 1830 in Cascade, 1963 Gallatin, 1687 Missoula, 1449 in the Flathead, and 1244 Lewis and Clark. There are a bunch of cases all over the state. And uh, look, this isn't going away. My question is, and this was brought up to me by a friend of mine, my question now is, with Helena High losing Tuesday in the semifinals, volleyball, does Governor Bullock shut down the state next week, now that Helena High is done? Will he shut down the state again? What is he? I mean, he has nothing to lose. I mean, does he shut down the state again? Because he's going to be out of office here in a month and a half or so. It's just a question, and it's a worrisome question for sure. There's no question about that. Would he shut down the state? Uh, of course, he won't come on to answer it, So, and nobody else will ask him because they're too scared But uh, in the media. But just think about it. Just something to think about. Would he do that and, uh, and leave the next governor, Greg John Forte, to uh, deal and clean that, that mess. 
question. Uh, not sure if you saw this, but this just came out oh, about an hour ago, hour and a half ago, maybe. Uh, Montana All-America and record-breaking receiver. Samari so Tori is breaking away and leaving the Grizz. He entered the NCAA transfer portal today. He is the first top-tier Grizzly to answer, uh, enter the transfer portal. Uh, Frank Gogla, uh, 406mtsports.com, pretty good article. And uh, Torre said uh, basically that he wants to, uh, well, he wants to thank everybody, the coaches, Grizz Nation, um, all of that. But he, he graduates this spring. And he's looking to, and he can graduate and he play immediately wherever he transfers. Now, he can still come back if he chooses, but entering the transfer portal allows him to contact other schools and other coaches without any punishment. Uh, UM spokesman told 406mtsports.com that Coach Bobby Houck, quote, doesn't have a comment at this time, end quote. Uh, Torre on four All-America teams after the last season. He was preseason first team selection heading into this coming fall, which is now in the spring. Uh, he's also a semifinalist, or was, for the Campbell Trophy, the academic Heisman. This dude's smart. Uh, set records, single season records for the Grizz last year, 87 receptions, 1,495 receiving yards. He also had 13 touchdown passes. Uh, he leaves ranking 8th in receiving yards, 11th in touchdowns, catches, and 12th in receptions. Uh, he needed, according to uh, Frank Gogla, just 37 catches and 533 receiving yards to top and become the top Grizz in those categories, but he's not going to. He had 303 receiving yards in the playoff win. Remember that over southeastern Louisiana? Which is um, the FCS playoff record. And uh, lots of uh, Grizz su tweeting support for him. Sammy Akem, who we've talked to here on the show. Uh, very happy for him. Keenan Curran uh, as well. Now, players who enter the portal, like I said, are still allowed to a, a turn, return to their school if they choose to and are welcomed back by the coaching staff. Now, to quote 406mtsports.com, Halk previously said that Grizz players who enter the portal forfeit their scholarship when it expires at the end of the school year and that those year-to-year -year scholarships won't be saved for them if they decide to return. He said in March, quote, you're either in or you're out, end quote. Um, so he's not going to be happy. And if Torre wants to return, Bobby Houck would take him back. He's obviously pretty upset. But um, you'd be dumb not to take him back if he wants to come back. But anyway, uh, that is uh, that. Is that. Uh, coming up here in a few minutes, we're going to check in with Audrey Hofer, who will uh, play volleyball at Montana State. Go Bobcats. Uh, she also is going to tell us about Capitals' chances for a three-peat and uh, much more. Um, and she took <laughs> – we talked to her this morning. She took time out of her studies. Um, which she's online today and tomorrow because of the name thing and how they do it. So uh, anyway, that's uh, going to be fun to chat with her. You're going to enjoy it. And it's coming up next. Yes, Sue. Go Cats. <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for Sherry to respond, Go Grizz. But um, two, two great followers of the show. All right, we'll, we'll take a break. We're going to come back and talk to uh, Audrey Hofer. And uh, that is next. This is the Jason Walker Show presented by Capital Collision Center. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle, and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings, or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, 
It feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918, or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Fall is officially here, and now is the perfect time to get your rig tuned up before the big hunt. That means a lift kit from Auto Concepts. An Auto Concepts lift kit will help take you places only the animals can go. And when you do get that big one, make sure you have help to get it home with a winch to pull it out. Or maybe you'll be a good friend and help pull someone out of the snowbank. Check out AutoConceptsHelena.com for more ideas. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta iComfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. Welcome back on a Thursday presented by Capital Collision Center. Jason Walker Show here inside the Major Mortgage Man Cave as uh, we get set to talk to the co-directors of the documentary Cowboys, Bud Force and John Langmore, coming up in about 25 minutes. We've got volleyball across the state, uh, state tournaments going on in Sydney and Malta and Shelby as we speak. In fact, I'll be in Shelby on Saturday broadcasting the championship match for uh, NFHS with uh, with whoever's in it, which will be fun. And right now, it looks like Huntley's got a great chance of going back to back to back. Um, speaking of volleyball, there is a championship match set for Saturday as well in the AA. And it's going to be a good one. You've got 17-0 CMR against uh, 16-0 Capital. I think I got the records right. Capital going for a three-peat. CMR looking to end that. And then also stop Capital's 70-match win streak. Chat about that and much more. Right now on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline is the Under Armour First Team All-America. Her name is Audrey Hofer. She just signed with the Bobcats of Montana State and Coach Daniel Jones yesterday. And she joins us now here on the Jason Walker Show. Three, two, one. Well, first off, I appreciate you taking some time out of your online studies to uh, to join us today. But how you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. Just trying to get my classwork done. <laughs> uh, what are we working on at the very moment? Um, right now, I'm doing my health careers class. Okay, that's a that seems like a good thing to to <laughs> focus on for your life. Yeah. <laughs> what What's your GPA? Um, I have a 4.0. Are you serious? Yeah. You're really smart, um, which is great. Hey, um, Audrey Ho for joining us here, Jason Walker Show. Under Armour All-America, that was uh, announced earlier this week. Um, what's that mean to you? It, it, I'm so honored to get it. Um, it just shows all the hard work that I've put in through the years and just everything that my team has done for me. They've pushed me to become the player I am, and I really owe most of it to them and all of my coaches. Uh, it's a bummer, though, you don't get to go to Orlando to play in the actual match. Yeah, that was <laughs> – I didn't even know that they had a match, and by the time I found out, it was already canceled, so that was kind of sad, but it's right. still a great thing. It absolutely is. Um, yesterday, signing with Montana State, go Bobcats. Um, how hard did they recruit you? Um, 
they started recruiting me pretty hard my sophomore year just because like at the d1 level they have to recruit like early you know Mm -hmm. compared to like nai when you can wait a little bit longer and so it was kind of more like on like more pressure on my sophomore year i guess but i was really happy to commit to them uh Coach Jones has done a nice job turning that uh, that program around down there. Um, was that part of it for you? Um, absolutely. Coach Jones, I I love him. He is such an amazing coach, such an amazing person, and I am just so excited to be able to play for him. It's going to be uh, fun to watch you in that blue and gold for sure. And uh, I used to do the PA announcing for volleyball, so I'm very familiar with Schroyer. It's a great place to play some volleyball, and, and uh, you'll have a good time down there. What you are going to major in? Um, I'm doing an exercise science. Which goes along with health careers that you're doing right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Audrey Hofer, our guest here, Jason Walker Show. Tough, tough match on Tuesday night. You guys end up pulling it out, though. Um, at what point in that fourth set were you thinking, uh-oh, we could be done? Or did you at all? Um, there was definitely, I had to admit it, but there was definitely a point where I was like, oh, God, this might not end up how we want it to. Um, but we took a timeout and it was kind of funny because as soon as we got back out on the court, we were down, I think like 15 to like 17 or something like that. And Paige just kept looking at me and she just goes, Hey, that's only 10 more points. Like there's <laughs> only 10 more points we got to get. And every single point she'd come back in that's, Hey, we only have nine more points. Like we're right there. And just, that was kind of a weird, like, I've never heard her say that before. And I feel like that really, like, stuck with a lot of us. And we're just like, hey, it's only this, like, we're close. We don't need to, like, put stress on ourselves that we don't need. We just need to score, like, 10 more points. So you were a sophomore. You guys were all sophomores when you last lost. Is that right? Yeah. It was halfway through my sophomore year. Wow. And that's the year you were named uh, Gatorade Player of the Year for the state, correct? Yes. Um, Did you feel like you should have won it last year, but you got hosed by your teammate? I'm kidding. <laughs> no, Paige, Paige totally deserves that. I'm so happy for her. Would it be something, Audrey, if you win it your sophomore year, Paige last year, and Danny this year? Oh, I totally thought about that, and I think it would be so cool. Um, probably yeah, going to be awesome. Paige again, though, right? <laughs> or uh, <laughs> probably going to be Paige again is my guess. But um, how about a th- just three-way tie? I like that. Let's do that. <laughs> Split it three ways. You know what? I would... I'd love to split it three ways between those guys. Uh, Speaking of three, you got a chance Saturday to do something special, and that is go back to back to back. Um, It's a little different, Audrey, this year with the state tournament not being in Bozeman. Um, How odd is that, first off? Um, It's definitely weird that it's not in Bozeman, but, like, the whole whole thing is just weird anyways because of, like, the no fans hardly and just the not actual tournaments, you know? It's just, like spread out between two weeks. So it's definitely a different experience for me. Um, has it been harder? And I, I think it was, maybe it was Paige or Danny, but said the other night in the paper that it's been, it's been a different mindset for them. Has it been a different mindset for you? Yeah, a little bit. It's just, it's weird not having the normal people we have there, like not having our normal support system, but it's, it's not too much of a change because when we play, like we rely on our teammates. We don't really focus so much on the crowd. But it is definitely something that you do notice when you're playing, and it is something that I notice now that they're not there. The non-conference portion of the season uh, was non-existent, so you haven't seen CMR yet this year except on some tape, but you're very familiar with the Rustlers and uh, their attack. How do you guys win on Saturday? Um, we just come in knowing, like, having some of their tendencies in mind, but really focusing on our game focusing on what we can do to better the ball each play and just focus on our side of the net. Um, they've got some good talent. And this is a, is this the dream matchup for the year? Um, for this year, definitely. It's like obviously like big headlines, like we're both undefeated teams or whatever. And I have so much respect for those players, Lauren Lindseth, Kenny Hiller. I, like, I love playing with them and I've played with them before. And I think it's just going to be really exciting to go up against them again and just fight for the win. Uh, Audrey Hofer joining us, Jason Walker show. A couple final questions because I know you want to get back to your homework. Um, says <laughs> says no kid ever, but with a 4.0, you, you yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> but this is a team, this is a, girl, a bunch of girls that you've seen 
over, like I said, over the last couple of years, especially in summer travel league or non-conference action, but also at the state tournament. So you know uh, what to expect. How does that help and how does it hurt? Um, it definitely helps because like we know what, or we have like an idea of what they're going to do so we can prepare and practice like taking what blocks or like defensively how we want to set up and stuff. Um, but I feel like that also kind of takes away from our side of the net, like, because as a program, we really like to focus on what we can do. Like, the other side is going to do whatever, but how we, like, play with that or how we control what we do on our side of the net is really what determines the game, I think. And so, like, focusing too much on them could be, like, a big mis- or not a big mistake, but that definitely could be a factor of what goes on on our side of the net. And I just think we need to focus on us. Uh, I was having a disagreement with my wife. How tall are you? I'm 5'8". Oh, I was right. Okay. I said 5'7 or 5'8". So. Yeah, I uh, I bounce between 5'7 and 5'8". Th- does it depend on the sport? Because um, you guys always jack up your heights a little bit. Um. Yeah, well, I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can jack up mine too much. You can't. You see me and you know. You know I'm not like 5'10". That's true. That is true. Um, all right. Who's your favorite coach, Rebecca Cleveland or Katie Garson Forba? Oh, you can't even ask me that. I <laughs> no, but I did. I know you're going to go politically you're... correct and say I love them both. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, yeah, but I got to get a little dig in on Coach uh, to, uh, Catherine. That's what we call her now because uh, um, that's just fun to, to, for her. Um, hey, going back to March and not being able to complete the state tournament and now being able to play for the state championship in volleyball, is that kind of, and I know it's a different sport and it's a different ending, but is it a little bit of closure? It honestly is. Like, basketball just ended so abruptly. Like, that was, no one expected anything like that to happen. Like, we knew about everything going on with Corona and stuff, but we never thought it would, like, get to the point where we had one game left and they'd cancel it. And so now it feels like I'm actually getting to finish out something that I started, you know? Mm-hmm. And of course, if you get to play a state basketball tournament, that's going to have real closure then, I'm sure, next in next March. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, so we know about you. We know about the Barch Twins. Um, who else on this Capital Volleyball team has has played extraordinarily well this season to get you guys to this point? Um, honestly, I'd say everyone on our court. Kennedy, has her defense, we wouldn't be where we are at without her defense. Parkland, Heller, and Rachel Stacy. they were on JV last year, but they stepped up so much this year. And it's really nice because I they can rely on them just as much as I can Danny and Paige for anything. And so, and then all of our subs that come in, Nyla, Addy, Noel, they all come in and they can step in and play their role perfectly. And I, it just contributed to our season so much. What did it mean to have your parents uh, next to you yesterday during the signing? It meant so much. My mom is, my mom is the reason, like, I have got into volleyball, and she's the one who's coached me for so long and has pushed me to become the player I have. And my dad's just always focused on, like, being the best kind of person I can be and, like, being the best athlete and stuff. So having them by my side when I signed was really important to me. What's the dog's name that's always on the golf course? <laughs> Macy. Okay. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. She is the favorite child, but, yeah. <laughs> um, And you're somewhere in there? I'm somewhere. Me and my brother, we're like, we're lower ranked, but. You know. <laughs> uh, well, she is adorable out there. There's no question about that. Love, uh, love seeing it. Um, hey, I appreciate the time. Get back to your studies. Uh, good luck Saturday and uh, congratulations on signing with MSU. Thank you very much. That is uh, Audrey Hofer, capital standout in uh, not only uh, volleyball, but also basketball and track as well. She's a multi-sport athlete, 4.0, and uh, just a, a sweet girl to talk with. So uh, Capital will host CMR 2 p.m. Saturday at the Bears Den championship match of the state AA volleyball tournament, which has been different. There are volleyball tournaments going on. State, Cole Strip just upset Anaconda in five, so up in Shelby. So there will be no unbeaten this year in Class B. Uh, remember, Huntley Project lost twice this year. Um, but I would say they're still probably the favorite to go for a four-peat. 
By the way, the last three-peat in double-A was Billing Sr., which accomplished it uh, about a half a decade ago. And then uh, Capital trying for a three-peat itself on Saturday. Uh, speaking of Shelby and the Class B, I will be in Shelby Saturday broadcasting the championship match beginning at noon on or approximately noon on uh, NFHS um, with uh, MHSA Network. So that'll be a lot of fun. Join us, and uh, that'll be a good time. I'm. It could be Huntley and, and Joliet. Joliet the, the beat Huntley twice this year. Uh, it could be Huntley and Anaconda. Who knows? So uh, interesting stuff. It'll be fun to watch and follow along and then be up there on uh, in Shelby on uh, Saturday broadcasting that. Got some breaking news that just came out of um, the big time sports. Ivy League, which in July became the first Division I conference to say it would not hold sports in the fall because of coronavirus, announced today that it is canceling winter sports for the 2020 21 season spring sports postponed until at least the end of February and fall sports will not conduct competition now during the spring. So there's a really good chance that the Ivy league will not have sports for an entire year. Now, remember the Ivy league was the first to cancel its tournament last March because of coronavirus. Now, listen, there's a lot of smart ass people like smart people that go to the uh, that work at the Ivy League and they were the first to cancel their basketball tournaments last year the first to cancel football and fall sports they're also now the first to cancel all winter sports and you're going to see them cancel spring sports more than likely it's almost like the smart people know what's going on but what do i know i'm just a sports guy Talking sports. Um, <laughs> so anyway, sometimes we talk sports. Most of the time we talk sports. And we have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, we're going to try to get you some scores, but uh, the computer kind of froze, so that's okay. Um, really looking forward to getting up to Shelby, though. Looking forward to that. And, um, oh, hey, about this. Uh, this just came out. Uh, Steve Bullock. Uh, named by the New York Times as a potential pick for the president, uh, well, for Joe Biden, if he wins. And I've heard, well, Bullock says, or his office says he hasn't spoken with Biden or the transition team yet. Mm -hmm. He also said he didn't want to run for senator. I've heard a rumor, too, that Bullock, who got spanked by Steve Daines uh, last week, would run if T John Tester leaves his Senate seat for a spot in Biden's cabinet. And then Bullock would run for Tester's seat. Uh, Marissa Perry said in an email Thursday, quote, he has spoken to no one connected to President-elect Biden. It's not, there's no such thing or the transition team and has not made any decisions about what he'll be doing after his time in office as governor, end quote. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he got, he got beaten pretty good by Steve Daines last week. Uh, he also, remember, read for um, president for eight months, uh, but never got more than 1% of the vote ever. Like, he couldn't even get on the stage to debate. So... Um, interesting. We'll keep an eye on that. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I've talked to people and I, I wonder if he's going to shut down the state here in the next week or so. And, and, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to keep an eye on for sure. Uh, let's see. NCAA. Uh, we just talked about the Ivy league canceling its winter sports season, but, there was an article today on watchstadium.com. Jeff Goodman wrote it, and he is seeing, uh, he says that uh, one mid-major college basketball program has been shut down for 52 days since mid-July due to coronavirus-related issues. Another school practiced six times after a 14-day quarantine before being hit with another 14-day isolation because of a second player testing. 
positive. Um, a different program was shut down for 14 days this week after a player test positive and his roommates were contact traced. So what Goodman is proposing is scrapping non-conference basketball games in the NCAA. What are your thoughts on that? Um, of 125 Division I head basketball coaches polled, 30% told Stadium that they've already or are currently shut down for at least 14 days. Seven different basketball programs in Division I have been shut down twice for 14 days. Uh, one high mid-major coach told Jeff Goodman, quote, it's irresponsible, but people only care about money, end quote. There's others that want to start in December because um, another high major coach said that uh, mid-December start would allow players to go home for Thanksgiving and spend time with their families, saying that because they usually can't go home for Christmas, and he worries about the mental health of the kids. And that's the other thing to think about, too. So if we can even get a conference season... That would be nice. But I'm not sure, man. I don't know. Uh, I was also told today, Carroll College not allowing fans uh, for basketball games, nor is MSU. Montana State will not uh, allow fans to start um, in the uh, Brick Breeden Fieldhouse. And Carroll as well at the PE Center not allowing fans to go watch basketball stuff to keep an eye on as we move forward here. And this is only going to, you know, the numbers are only going to go up now. How many are flu? How many is COVID? Just throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Um, and what are your plans for Thanksgiving? Because a lot of uh, governors, a lot of Democratic governors around the nation are saying to stay home and do not have any family over. What are you going to do in a couple of weeks? So, uh, Master started today. And everybody freaking out about Tiger Woods being four under. Um, he's three shots off the lead. So, can we focus on the people that are actually doing better? And like, I've never been a Tiger fan. Never have. What he's done for the game of golf and growth, tremendous. But never was a fan. Now, has he changed his attitude a little bit since getting his ass kicked by his ex-wife for, you know, cheating around? Probably. Seems to be friendlier with other players on the course. But there's other, like, there's other golfers. I'm also not a DeChambeau fan, so Bryson DeChambeau. Not a fan of his either. I'm a Phil guy, Jordan Spieth. Now, Spieth hasn't had any success since, like, what, four years now since he won a lot. Brooks Koepka's injured. so But the Masters going on in November, which is just crazy, crazy. And very select, limited fans are there. All right. Uh, I want to take a break. When we come back, we are going to chat with uh, the co-directors of the documentary about Cowboys. It's called Cowboys, a documentary portrait. And we'll talk to the co-directors, Bud Force and John Langmore, when we return here on the Jason Walker Show. Jason Walker here, and I want to tell you about a great place that's going to make you feel better in just an hour. Ocean Spirit Massage. From deep tissue to hot stone and more, Ocean Spirit Massage will get your sore, tired muscles feeling like new. Whether you overdid it working out, hiking the hills, playing golf, whatever it is, or even if you're pregnant, you will walk away feeling better than you have in years. Book now for yourself or make it a couple's massage. And gift certificates are always available as well. Visit OceanSpiritMassage.com or call 417 0542. 
Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Fall is officially here, and now is the perfect time to get your rig tuned up before the big hunt. That means a lift kit from Auto Concepts. An Auto Concepts lift kit will help take you places only the animals can go. And when you do get that big one, make sure you have help to get it home with a winch to pull it out. Or maybe you'll be a good friend and help pull someone out of the snowbank. Check out AutoConceptsHelena.com for more ideas. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collision Center, back inside the Major Mortgage Man Cave. And Capital Collision Center spends a lot of money to make sure that they they do the job right the first time on your vehicle. They spent millions of dollars to achieve safety ratings. Well, manufacturers have spent millions of dollars, and they want their vehicles properly repaired to manufacturer specification. Well, Capital Collision was one of the first in the country become manufacturer certified special training special equipment and it's important to capital collision that your vehicles properly repaired to manufacture repair requirements to maintain the safety and value of your vehicle uh on this day in history coming up there is um we talked about the uh ivy league canceling all of its winter sports Interesting stuff there for sure. Oh my. Uh, let's see. Audrey Hofer joined us earlier. She uh, joined us for That's What She Said, brought to you by Dinner's Done Right. Dinner's Done Right takes the, uh, takes the, uh, the hard work out of cooking, like literally. They, um, they just they do it the right way. They make the food. You show up and pick it up and then just go home and cook it. It saves on dishes, it saves on prep, it saves on a lot, and it saves a lot of headache. Uh, go to Dinner's Done Right and uh, stop by. Say hi to Vicky and the crew. It's a great crew over there. And uh, enjoy Dinner's Done Right for dinner tonight. Ooh, that was good. I might have to throw that in next time. All right. Uh, there's a, there, we mentioned the new movie coming out. It is called uh, Cowboys. And I think I had... Yeah, I was going to pull some of it up here and try to show you a little bit of it while we talk. Um, it's pretty cool. 
It was a good movie. I watched it yesterday. Got a chance to watch it yesterday. And, yeah. A lot of people have trouble with putting up with the hours. Some putting up with the, the elements. You know, there's dusty hot days. There's old dusty cold days. It was just part of life. Yeah. When someone meets you and you say you cowboy, they they really have no idea what it is the job is. Person has to be pretty self confident to live out by themselves, and you're alone a lot. You know, you're not the limelight. That is a little preview of the uh, documentary Cowboys. It was uh, co-directed by Bud Force and John Langmore, who join us now here on the Jason Walker Show, courtesy of the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. Pretty good. How are you today? You know, I'm just living the dream, getting to talk about the cowboy way of life. And uh, uh, I guess we'll just start. Let's just jump right into this. Why this documentary? And uh, Bud, we'll start with you. Well, uh, both myself and my co-director, John Langmore, we come from a cowboy background and me specifically a rodeo background and just hadn't seen uh, a documentary we thought was fully authentic and uh, something that the general public could also appreciate. Um, John, I I just got done watching it. And what uh, surprised me the most was the cinematography, unbelievable cinematography in this. Um, obviously it's easy to get great shots when it's nice, but how difficult was, was this filming? Yeah, Bud, why don't you take that? Because Bud it was the director of photography and, you know, um, all that belongs to him and the two other cameramen. So I'll hand that off to Bud. Oh, well, well okay. appreciate it, John. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we had a small crew, John, myself, and one of two other cameramen that we would take, uh, depending on when they were available we filmed for two years over the course of four seasons, ended up with a 176 hours of usable footage, but we tried to operate light and fast. We had a, a, a very small crew. We used very minimal gear, uh, small drones, small cameras, but uh, high end cameras. And, and we tried to operate as a fly on the wall. So no scenes in the film were staged whatsoever, but we would just show up at certain times of the year and, and like I say, basically just sit and, and document and, uh, and, and enjoy the show as we were filming. Granted, we were filming all over the American West, which provides an incredible canvas, mm. uh, whether you're shooting cinematography or still photography. And all of the still photos in the film are film photos that, that John had shot. Okay. And Jason, I just might add to that, that, you know, something Bud and I talked about extensively was, you know, not relying just on the cinematography to carry the film. We wanted, you know, the reality of a working cowboy life to also be an important part of it. And, um, you know, it's a fine balance to walk, you know, to accept the beauty of, um, you know, as Bud said, the landscape that you get to work in, but not letting that you know, completely subsume the harsh reality of a working cowboy's life. Sure. Uh, John, did you find it easy to talk with these cowboys and, and, and really cowgirls too? I mean, let's be honest, there's a a couple of them in there too, but this is a, this is a lifestyle and were they, were they easy to open up to or from, from to you? Yeah. So Jason and that, it, it, it was, but only from the perspective that I, you know, I worked on several of the ranches that are in the film previously when in, in my younger days. And then I had spent four years before the film photographing for a book on working cowboys called Open Range. Mm-hmm. And so when Bud and I partnered to form 1922 films and go shoot cowboys, for most of it, Bud had a relationship with some of the places in Texas and I had relationships from having worked on this book the last four years and cowboyed earlier with all of those other ranches. So we were going back 
where we had friends. Um, you know, and it is hard to get on those ranches. They will not let you come out if you don't have a good reason to be there. And so when we showed up, you know, we were going back to places we had already been, close group of friends. And I think there is no question that, you know, them knowing that, you know, that I had been a part of this life for a long time helped them open up in a way that, um, you know, where they were really candid about how they feel about living the cowboy lifestyle, both the men and women, which, as you noted, are important parts of the film. Hey, Bud, when you, uh, you know, like I said, I just watched this film, and, and one of the lines that stood out is, you know, the, the Western movies and cowboy movies, they don't tell the whole story. And, you know, that's all the fun and out riding and, and doing all that. But it doesn't include, you know, the, the working end of this. And, like, it's, you guys have both been through this, and obviously getting to tell that story from their eyes was important, I believe. Well, exactly. And we, we did want to show this specific aspect of the cowboy world. You know, the term cowboy means a lot of different things to many different people, depending on who you are. You have rodeo cowboys, which are more so athletes. You have family ranch cowboys you know, who might run a small herd on a couple hundred acres. Um, you might have a rogue politician that someone calls a cowboy, but we wanted to take it down to this very concentrated format of this big outfit working cowboy, which is a cowboy who works with other cowboys in the crew, primarily horseback on large ranches. The smallest ranch we filmed on was 187,000 acres here in Texas. And the biggest ranch we filmed on was 1.1 million acres. And so this culture still exists. It's not going anywhere. Uh, it's just a lot of people don't realize it exists because they go into the grocery store and, and grab their meat once it's wrapped in cellophane and, and is beautifully packaged. And you can't see these folks from the road. And you're usually not going to see them in town. So we really wanted to go through and, and kind of separate this culture and, and really dive down into what these people do, but also show who they are. Bud Forrest and John Langmore, co-directors of a Cowboys documentary. And I, I, like I said, I just loved watching this. Um, John, back to you. And when you, when you talk about the Cowboy way of life, and Bud just kind of referenced it, but they are working in team. And this really, you know, this goes back, this is the, the, the best teamwork uh, on, on a ranch uh, going back hundreds of years, you know, this is better than an NFL team or Major League Baseball teamwork and the camaraderie. You really do rely on your other friends here. Yeah, no, that's a, an excellent point, Jason, and I'm sure that, you know, a lot of your listeners can relate to it in terms of teamwork. And there's a part in the film where they talk about, you know, moving a large herd of cows, like sometimes they'll move as many as 2,000 cows at a single time. And the guy talks about the fact that how you move a big group of cows was really kind of perfected, you know, 100 plus years ago, you know, really on those trail drives. And you, if anyone, it's like a portable corral. And, um, you know, all of the cowboys are the corral. And if someone isn't doing their job, you create a hole in that corral where, you know, some or all of the herd can spill out. And you need to know that the guy next to you is doing his job, and he needs to know that you're doing yours. And it's a real, like, there is so much that goes into knowing, you know, where to be, knowing where the guy, the man or woman next to you is and what they should be doing, who goes back to get that cow that's turning around, who doesn't. Um, you know, even little things like you never ride between uh, a cowboy and the herd. If you need to go to a different side of the herd, you always ride beside, behind someone. If you ride in front of them, that's an insult akin to spitting in their face. And so there's just a whole bunch of things that go into, you know, being a working cowboy, especially on these big outfits. And there is no question that is a, a deeply rooted in teamwork. You guys both got to, as you mentioned, worked on ranches. Um, you got to film in Texas and Nevada and Arizona. 
Um, I did notice uh, Hardin or Bighorn County, Montana, in the winter. You guys didn't, you couldn't come up there, up here to Montana in the summer when it's nicer. <laughs> we didn't want to. We wanted to get that big old nasty winter. And what's funny is, like two days before we showed up, I think the the grass was green and it was fifty something degrees. And when when we showed up, we brought a ten inch blizzard with us, which was exactly what we wanted to do. You know, we wanted to show the harsh realities of Montana and Wyoming winters, and we wanted to show those realities of hot, dusty Arizona summers as well. And, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time out there in the field, but there was also a lot of good fortune for us in being able to capture the weather the way that we were able. I got to ask. Uh, and that was our one, oh, I was ahead. just going to say, that was our one winter shot. So we were sweating in it when it was 50 degrees, <laughs> you know, and there was green grass everywhere the day before we got there. So. Yeah. I- uh, we, weren't, I, we weren't filming. We weren't sweating when we were filming that, though. You know, cowboys are tough, but I, I kind of feel like cameramen are tougher because you're out there trying to work <laughs> that camera and film them throwing the hay. <laughs> we were freezing. It was eight below every day. We were filming oh, that. Oh man, it just looked cold when you're watching the film. Um, John, I got to ask: the horse that got bit by the rattlesnake, did it? How's it do? Or how was it doing? Perfectly fine. Nothing. Uh, yeah, you're the, it's funny. You're the first one to ask about the horse. Everyone asks about the calf. Did the calf make it or not? Um, oh, yeah. And I will just let everybody watch the film to find out, but the horse came out perfectly fine. You know, as far as snake bites go, that one actually wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, I was watching that and the little girl trying to, you know, pet it. Oh, so, so cute. Yeah. Um, what is the yeah. one thing, uh, but I'll start with you on this. The one thing you guys hope uh, viewers take out of this film. Well, I think it's um, understanding this culture, realizing they're real people, understanding that it exists and that it is not uh, a last of the kind breed. Like I I said before, you know, as long as people eat beef, there will always be caretakers of cattle Mm -hmm. to provide that beef, AKA cowboys. And so I hope it's just educational to folks to let them know where their food comes from and the care and the love that goes into this profession and the animals themselves. And John, what about you? Yeah, no, I would, uh, you know, agree with everything that Bud said. It's a, you know, it's a chance for people to experience a way of life that there's really no other way to experience because you just can't get on to these big places. And, you know, I've always kind of said the audience for this film is anyone that's ever dreamed of being a cowboy or a cowgirl. And, you know, in terms of like, showing the reality of this way of life. What I would love is if someone walked out of the film and said, man, you know, after watching that, I would love to be a cowboy, but there is no way in hell that I could ever do it. Um, You know, which is kind of because there is a bit of romance and it is a hard, you know, low paid way of life. Um, You know, but one they obviously love for a bunch of reasons. Well, Bud, John, appreciate the time. The co-directors of Cowboys, Bud Force, John Langmore. I know you guys got to run, but uh, enjoyed the movie, and I, I wish you guys the best success. Thanks, Thanks so much, sir. Jason. Enjoyed it. Uh, man, yeah, you get a chance to watch this uh, November 17th. Uh, Cowboys, a documentary portrait from 1922 films, and uh, available worldwide November 17th on Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, and Video On Demand. Um, it was so good. So, so good. And here, I'll uh, see if I can show you the trailer here. Um, now that we already did the interview, now we'll show the trailer. It's a little opposite of what they do on the uh, um, TV shows. It's a life there you go. not everybody has or understand or will ever understand. seemed like if I didn't do it anymore that, you know, something would be gone. Cowboys know what you do. It's, it's who you are, you know. It's just something in you. It's rough. Pay's low. Houses are rough. The hours are long. And there's isolation, and it doesn't work for everybody. 
My husband said, I've always been a cowboy, never done nothing but be a cowboy. You know, the money isn't important, I'm a cowboy. And I said, okay. <laughs> There'll be younger guys that come out and make it for a little while and then they, they just can't take the isolation. And it don't take long once they get out here to know if they're gonna make it or not. They've been talking about the cowboy dying for a hundred years. But that same old time spirit is still in them. And it always will be. I think you have to like to suffer if you want to really be a good cowboy. Uh, 1922 films, Cowboys, a documentary portrait. And uh, like I said, it'll be, uh, it'll be out um, worldwide on the 17th of November. Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, and Video On Demand. Appreciate uh, Bud Force and John Langmore joining us. It, uh, man, great movie. I hope you guys get a chance to see it. Seriously, so good. Um, I highly recommend it. All right, on this day in history. Oh, uh, this segment, by the way, brought to you by Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has calendars out now. You know, we talk about his photos. Well, he's put together calendars. And I'm telling you, it's so amazing what Mark does with his um, photos. And these calendars look good. And, uh, in fact, we ordered a couple for the kids, um, the oldest ones. Uh, that live in Alabama and Kansas now. It's uh, all Montana landscapes. It's all Montana stuff, and it's uh, available at MarkLaRoePhotography.com. Um, man, it's just so good. All right, today is uh, November the 12th. It is uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul Day, Pizza with the Works Except Anchovies Day, and National French Dip Day. And uh, I'm a big fan of the French Dip. I like that. 1955, Eddie Acaro, Earl Sand, and George Wolfe were the inaugural inductees into the Horse Racing Hall of Fame. We know about Eddie Acaro. Uh, George Wolfe was the jockey on Seabiscuit. Do you remember that movie? So, there you go. Joe Sackick, Matt Sundin, Pavel Bure, Adam Oates, inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame on this date in 2012. 1944. Al Michaels was born, the American sportscaster. 1961, happy birthday, Nadia Comaneci, the Romanian gymnast, five-time Olympic gold medalist. 1970, um, Tanya Harding was born and uh, finished eighth in uh, the Olympics in 1994. Of course, we know about Tanya and Nancy and all that. Um, did you ever see the movie? Well, it was the home movie. Tanya and, and Jeff Galuli. Um, I never saw I, Tanya, but I'm talking about the home movie. So this would have been in the mid-90s the, the home movie was released. And a bunch of us radio dudes grabbed some beer and went and watched it at a buddy's house. It's so bad. Such a bad movie. Um, 1929, happy birthday, Grace Kelly. Uh, rear window actress, Princess of Monaco. She was born in Philly in 1929. Uh, 1934, Charles Manson was born. He died in 2017. Um, I forgot till today that he had that he had died. Just don't think of Charles Manson, I guess. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. Tanks, uh, tanks. Thank you to Cafe Zydeco. They bring us the walk-off. 625 Euclid in Helena, also in Billings and Bozeman. Great Cajun food. Uh, thanks to Audrey Hofer for joining us. Capital Volleyball hosts CMR Saturday at 2 in the AA Championship. Bud Force, John Langmore, co-directors of Cowboys, a documentary portrait. Uh, tomorrow, longtime uh, coach John Thatcher will join us. Greg Gianforte will join us. Is it Gianforte or John Forte? We'll ask him tomorrow. The future governor of Montana and uh, all those playing tonight in volleyball good luck you got a chance to uh, work your way back if you so choose 
Um, Columbia Falls won earlier today. Harden won. Glen Dive. Cole Strip. Huntley. Fort Benton. Manhattan Christian. Shoto. Got uh, Bridger beat Sims. Got some matches tonight in the uh, quarters and stuff like that. So uh, good, congratulations for making it to state and good luck. All right, we'll do it again tomorrow. Like I said, John Thatcher, the coach, longtime Butte High coach, joins us. He's also Butte Central standout. And uh, Governor, future Governor Greg Gianforte. It's tomorrow here on the Jason Walker Show. Have a great Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow at 4. Go to jasonwalkershow.com and have a great night. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.